welcome councillors, staff and the gallery. Um, welcome to the uh, 15th of March council meeting. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout the Barossa region and recognise their continued connection with land, waters and culture and sincerely pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Moving on to the agenda, there is no leave of absence. We'll move on to 1.5, which is the minutes of the previous meetings for confirmation. They were council meetings held on the 15th of February at 9am and a special council meeting held on the 2nd of March 2022 at 6pm. Moved Councillor Havick, seconded Councillor Schilling. Any questions? All those in favour? Carry. No matters arising from the previous meetings, no petitions. We move to item 1.10 on page 5, which was a question with or without notice. This was a question on notice from Councillor Schilling regarding a petition for flood mitigation channel, Kalimna Creek down to the Granock Road near Eupta on page 5. There's a recommendation there. Are you happy with uh, the answer? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it. Yeah. Moved Councillor Debris, seconded Councillor Johnston. Either one of you wish to speak to them? No, it seems that Councillor Schilling is happy with the response. Thank you. <laughs> All those in favour? Carry. <coughs> following page is on page six is the mayor's report uh, to council for the March meeting. Any questions that anyone may have with regard to my report? Councillor Barrett. Two quick questions. I see on the 18th of February at a meeting with uh, um, the Minister Simon Birmingham concerning two matters, the wine trail and the creative industries centre. Give us an update on those. Yes, um, thanks, Councillor. Yeah, it was really just to uh, draw his attention to see him a uh, couple of documents, that, and I and they're attached to uh, in our uh, CA items that we've been promoting uh, with the various conversations with the uh, adjoining mayors, as well as that opportunity to talk to uh, Senator Birmingham. He highlighted uh, that. In his opinion, it, it, both of them appeared to be really good projects uh, and probably encouraged us to sort of seek a bit of buy-in from the state as well, particularly in light of the um, Liberal Party and the current government, as we sit this week. Um, um, <coughs> not following on with the Melbourne to Adelaide bike trail, and it was thought that, you know, the, the uh, Great Australian Wine Trail, which would be far more beneficial for, for our state and, and, and the country than the, than the bike trail to Melbourne to Adelaide and better better utilisation. So it was really just to get some advice from him and he, he just provided us some, some opportunities to continue to talk to the state as well as, well, mainly the state and have some buy-in from them. And further to that, I, I met with... Uh, Senator Little Proud on Sunday at, at, a, at another function, and I did, did approach the same two topics with him as well. And he's asked for, for some information to be sent to him as well. So, so we'll grab every opportunity. Thank you. Yep. And the second question I had, if, uh, if I could, uh, I've seen the same date. He also had a meeting with some people from Williamstown about the. Queen Victoria Jubilee Park relocation. Yeah. Yep. Update on that one, please. Yeah, no. Look, um, staff had arranged uh, to, to to meet with a, with a group of key stakeholders uh, just to go over some of the detail of what was proposed and the importance of moving forward because there is a budget allocation and there's some 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 time um, constraints on sort of trying to <coughs> endeavour to um, build build it within this financial year. 
It was a very uh, informative meeting, and I must, and I have mentioned to the Director of Works and Engineering, the, the staff presented extremely well uh, and answered all the questions from the group. And I left there with a clear understanding that there was full support for what was being proposed and its location. Thank you very much. Yep. Councillor Wee Smith. Uh, I have a comment and a question. So first of all, the comment just regarding the declaration of vintage on the 20th of February. Um, I think it's important that we as a council acknowledge the viticulturist of the year, Amanda Maida, and the winemaker of the year, Matthew Pellew, um, and extend our congratulations to them because they're obviously quite important awards within the region. So just wanted to note that. Um, the other one was a meeting you had on the 10th of February with Matt Hale regarding <coughs> outdoor sporting festivals. I'm happy for this to be a question on notice. I'm just looking for an update. We obviously um, contracted a group to look at sporting opportunities within the region. I think it's going on two years ago now. Sports Management Australia, I think, was the name. And I'm just wondering where things are at with them. Yeah, um, thank you for the question. Um, we're, I'm convening a meeting with, with uh, Tourism Barossa as well as um, some council staff and Matt and there is some grant money out there at the moment that uh, we, we, we're looking at trying to pull some of that together. So I, I, I think we need to come back with, with some more detail shortly because it's a golden opportunity to fully <coughs> utilise what's been provided for us. But there's no doubt about it, uh, Mr Hale is a very enthusiastic and uh, creative person that uh, you know, doesn't, he's got a lot of energy and a lot of passion to... to uh, to fully utilise these facilities. So, yeah, yeah there'll be some further information once we've had that re uh, meeting with those key people. That's good. I guess my concern is if we're doubling up, I think that's fantastic that we're pursuing these opportunities. Yeah. But I also have in mind that we've paid, or well, I think we've paid, yeah. um, we definitely signed a contract with that's another right. organisation to do these sorts of things. So if we're doing the legwork, um, do we need to be aligned with them? And yeah, no, look, we'll, delivering. <laughs> it's a good point. We, we, so, we need to make sure said, we're, all, we're I all on the same page that. with all of those. Yep. We'll get you an SMA after. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? We move this report. Thank you. Councillor Johnston moved and seconded Councillor Wee Smith. Either one wishes to speak? Put the motion. All those in favour? Carried. <coughs> The consensus agenda, members, is there any items that you want excluded from the consensus? Uh, Councillor Louise Smith? Uh, item 431, the communications and engagement report. 431 on page... On page 36. And item 473, uh, the Town and the Not Lanker group minutes on page 56. Uh, Councillor Johnson? Uh, yes, 4.1.1 on page 7, the Town of Gawler Boundary Reform Proposal. I'd just like to ask a question, please. Councillor Barrett? Uh, 4.5.1, um, and it's uh, the follow-up on the earlier question I, I asked to do with the uh, Great Australian Wine Trail. OK. Thank you. Uh, oh, any other items? If not, the uh, mover and a seconder for those items that other than the ones that have been excluded. Councillor Hearn, moved. <coughs> and seconded Councillor De Vries. All those in favour? Carried. Councillor Wee Smith. Um, yeah, I just had some oh, a question on the communications report. Just looking um, at the community engagement list, so this report's on page 36 for everybody. Um, I'm just wondering what that community engagement entailed. So we've got a list of obviously the curbside waste, um, the retiling at the leisure pool. Um, I'd just like to hear a bit more detail about how we engage with the community on those particular items. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Ms. Yep. Ms. Bond. Ms. Marvin, yep. Thank you for that. Um, I understand that the engagement to date has been via our standard platforms, so social media platforms, um, our um, newsprint and advertising via the 
those methods and also our divine newsletters that go out as an e-news item. So mostly mm -hmm. digital and paper-based um, platforms um, in terms of uh, providing the me key messaging in relation to the opportunities and also council's direction for some of these activities. Okay. Thank you. Uh, move that the we'll item be received. Separately. No, they're doing individually. Individually. Would you like to move that one uh, be uh, yep. accepted? Moved Councillor Wee Smith, seconded Councillor DeVries. All those in favour for that item? Carried. Uh, next item was 4.7.3, Councillor Wee Smith. Yep, so, um, page 61 in the general business of the minutes here, um, there's a reference made to the tourist map of Lindock, which I understand the visitor centre and tourism Barossa put together and we supported, I believe, with a bit of funding, I could be wrong there, but certainly input into the maps. I guess my concern with the um, item that's listed there is that when the group contacted council, they were advised that it wasn't Barossa council responsibility. Um, so I just want to make sure, you know, if we're involved in things like this, um, that the correct message is getting out there. I understand that it was largely led by Tourism Barossa and they ensured that the maps got printed, but um, my understanding was that our side of the business was also quite well involved there too. So to be told that it's not our responsibility um, is a little bit concerning. Okay. Well, through you, Mr. Mead, MC, you know, so I'd have to chase it up and tell that to you. Well, that's, okay. that's their contribution to the, of the engagement. I don't know the others are. Well, it's resources to us. Of course, but you know they've called council and been told it's not council responsibility based well, on that. And I mean, it's responsibility to give us maps aren't tourism and Barossa's responsibility. Yeah, but we have had input in them. Yeah. We have had input in them. So surely that's some sort of feedback that we could pass on rather than just saying, hey, look, not our problem. Well, I've only got one side of that answer. So I'll find the other side. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to move feedback. that item? Yeah. Councillor Wee Smith, second to Councillor Johnston. All those in favour? Carried. Councillor Johnson. Uh, look, I just note that, um, uh, that the uh, boundary proposal calls for a considerable body of work <coughs> if, uh, if and when the, count, the Bogorla Council agrees to go ahead and pay for that work, I think if I understood that correctly, then it would appear that it could be considerable work come to this Council in order to respond to those consultants. I just wonder whether we understand the potential resourcing implications of that and are we ready for that to come along? Should uh, Gawler Council decide to go ahead? Yes, CEO. Through you, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Johnson. I guess the very short answer to that is no, because we don't actually don't know what details. Uh, we don't know what the quote is, we don't know what we have to get involved in. Um, but whatever path Gawler takes will be in the Council made it clear about that, so they will take a significant risk to start doing work for the new council business before it's without any. That's what we need to choose. And then the other thing I read in the correspondence is obviously there's been some tuning at home which we haven't been a part of. Um, and as the Mayor's identified, we'll write back to the Commission asking them to release that information also. Um, <coughs> it's the best I can do with what we're currently yeah, doing. I, I, I guess came in very late just before the... Yes. Was it Wednesday or Thursday? Yeah, Wednesday? it was very late. I was looking at that spreadsheet of the time timeline, and it's sort of there's a whole lot of pre work they intend to do up until the election. So I'm just wondering where that's going to land with us. That's all. Um, I my my gut is no, um, because that's work that they're required to do. But there will be some reliance that we would need to provide data potentially and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's ultimately up to them. So it's a fairly high risk to start spending money when there's a new election we haven't done. And, and the CEO and myself will be meeting with the CEO and the Mayor of Light also to sort of see what our position may be and I will report that back to the Chamber as to what we, our joint views may be. I'll move the item be accepted. Thank you. Moved, Councillor Johnson. Well, I was going to ask a question. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I may be... I'm, I need my memory's face, uh, uh, hazy on this, but didn't we actually communicate with them that if they're going to 
do this, that we're happy to engage, but we want them to pay for it. That's one of the questions that hasn't been answered. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing is, would this be the type of activity that could be conducted during a caretaker period? I would have thought it's sort of somewhat new business, um, so perhaps not. Through you, Mr Chair, I don't see a barrier to it. It's just gathering data, you're not making any decisions. Okay. Thank you. Any other Sorry. questions? Move Councillor Johnston, that item be received, and Councillor Booth be seconded. All those in favour? Carry. Page 38. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Councillor Barrett. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, the concerns I've got uh, with this Greater Australian Wine Trail is uh, there's two concerns. One is the use of the map um, that is on page 44. It's uh, got the Eden Valley wine region and incorporated in that is Mount Pleasant. Well, were not in the GI for Eden Valley, and it gives a bit of a false impression. And then I flip back to page 42, and I look at the item there, and it talks about under the heading of Ross of the Adelaide Hills. And it talks very nicely about Williamstown attractions, including Whispering Wall, Hale Conservation Park, Warren Tower Hike, and, and then we just get a fleeting mention of Eden Valley, and then we go back to the Warren Reservoir and fishing. Uh, living where I uh, live and the people I cohabit with uh, over there in Springton and Eden Valley, they would very much like some bit more promotion. They feel very much left out on a description that's been put forward like that. They just feel like they've been totally left out of it. Is there anything that could be done to include that area a bit more prominently? Mm. I guess, Councillor, <clears throat> this is very much a uh, very brief snapshot. And as you can see, there's not much mention there. Of, uh, and we're talking the Barossa, and we're also including Kapunda and Greenock and those places. We don't talk about Lindock and other places along, along the way. So, look, your, your point's taken, but I can just assure you that there is much more detail in the full document. This is very much a, a very short snapshot as what's been prepared as far as promotion. I don't know if Ms Thomas has, can add anything further to that before I summarise that from where we sit at the moment. Uh, through you, Mayor, yes, that's correct. Um, the objective of this particular document is very much towards a federal level in terms of funding and the advice from the consultants who were paid to do this and there was a lot of editing done on this, was that they cut out swathes of stuff that we put in. So, And that was the same for all of the councils, not just ourselves. So the, broad, the bigger document um, has that much more detail. Um, their comment was that at a federal level, people won't know what a lot of these places are anyway, and that too much detail, they won't read it in the new end. So, um, so it's a little bit of a compromise around some of that stuff. Yeah, we, there was stuff that we put in that got out and as I say that was the same for all of the all of the councils um, yeah there's a, there's a huge amount of information um, but I certainly take take the point and, and certainly the one of the unique pitches for the Mount Pleasant end of this section of our trail is that link through um, through Mount Pleasant bringing people into that town and then into the Adelaide Hills so uh, yeah we've certainly promoted all of that and there's a lot of economic data around each section of that in the doc in the broader document. So um, we can certainly share that um, as well. Um, but yeah, I agree with what the mayor said. So oh, yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. It, it's simply a lobbying document. It's not a promotion document. So if we get the money, and we need 40, 60 million to do this, that includes developing unique product for all those different areas. This is a fundamentally lobbying document. I understand your point, but it's written for that purpose. Thank you. So Thank moved. you. You move that item.
Seconded, Councillor Johnston. All those in favour? Carried. Members, um, we do have some very important recognitions. Um, and Chris, <coughs> I'll meet you over here, sir. And Lindley, <laughs> I'll come to you guys. Oh. Ladies first. Or, or is that being inappropriate? <laughs> Lindley. Lindley, Brossa Regional Gallery. Lindley, you've worked for a very long time at the gallery. They tell me 13 years. That's a long time and a lot of dedicated. Um, and you've been active in the gallery shop and your retail skills, your support has been really really much greatly appreciated by the visitors and I can ensure you greatly appreciated by all of us here in, in council and staff. But staff spoke very highly of you and uh, your insights into the culture, the gallery. You're the lady they say has got the finger on the pulse. Finger on the pulse. So what does that mean? Um, no, don't pull the wool over your eyes. No, they don't. Um... It's been a very easy um, place to work at and um, sort of I loved every minute of it actually, um, being able to get pass on my expertise to perhaps some of the other people that have been there because um, 13 years is a long time, I've been through lots and lots of changes. And all good? Oh, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so... And you will continue volunteering at the Visitor Information Centre, so we're not losing all of your expertise, are we? No, I'm working today, actually. Are you? <laughs> are you? Oh, well, we, we better not hold you up because you've got so much to do, haven't you? Right. So, but, Lindley, really, really do appreciate everything that you've done for this council, the community, and for the, all the tourists and the guests that come into our region. And we look forward to um, seeing you back at the Visitor Centre. If I may say that I have gained um, a lot of knowledge through being involved with the gallery and also the visitor centre. Um, <clears throat> I did do a short stay down at the uh, Anglican Op Shop in uh, Lindor and there once again I gained more knowledge. Um, so <clears throat> I feel that every day in my life, and I'm, I am getting older, um, I learned something new and about the valley, about perhaps the people that live in the valley um, and things like this. So for me, that is a very um, good thing and it does keep my brain very active. Tremendous. Great insight and we really, really do appreciate everything that you have done and will continue to do. So congratulations. Thank you very much. You're a man that travels many, many miles, I understand. 130,000 kilometres. They tell me that's three times around the world. Does it feel as if you've gone around the world three times? Yeah, it does sometimes. And you've probably met a lot of different characters along the journey. What's some of the real interesting things that you've discovered in your journey? Oh, well, uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure to visit. But uh, when I first started... All due respect to the female, what's the name? Female presence today. I uh, I went home to my wife and I said, "If I keep doing this for long, I'll know every lady's illness that's ever been thought of." <laughs> <laughs> that's just one of the things you sort of pick up while you got passengers in the back of the car, but you don't get involved. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. No, that's great. So you've you've done almost four thousand hours of, of volunteering work as community transport and I'm, I hear that everybody really has appreciated all of your passages, the staff that you've been involved with have always received positive feedback from, from your contribution and I guess in many ways it's a two ways, a bit of therapy both ways isn't it, you're, you're there listening to all of those ailments, you get out the car and feel a bit crook yourself <laughs> but I also understand that you know you're, you've made yourself available at least once a week and even in, in really pressed times where if something's cropped up, 
uh, as a bit of a, an emergency, you're always the, 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 the first point of call. And they tell me that they're going to really miss your cheeky nature. <laughs> Yes, well, I'll miss the girls in, in the office. <laughs> <laughs> All the girls in the office. But, uh, but well done, and once again, on behalf of all the elected members, staff, and the community, thanks very much for your valued contribution. And, uh, yeah, look, without our community transport and, and without our arts and our tourism, you know, we would leave a huge gap within our community. So you people have stepped up and done it so well for so many years. So thank you, thank you very much. There are... Okay, do we want a quick photograph? We need a quick photograph. Thank you. Oh, the mask. Just a few seconds, you want to come, come up the front with me? We'll stand in front of the... <laughs> Wendy's got all the details up there for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you both thank you once again. Much. Terrific. to adjourn to, for the, uh, the ordinary council meeting for a strategic planning and development policy committee meeting, which is scheduled for 9.30. So rather than moving further with the debate agenda, can I have a, a mover and a seconder. Move Councillor Hearn and seconded Councillor Wee Smith that we adjourn the council meeting to uh, have the strategic planning and development policy committee meeting. All those in favour? Thank you. So I formally welcome all present for the strategic planning and development policy meeting. The agenda has been circulated. There is no apologies. There's two consensus items. Is anyone wish to withdraw either one of those items? If not, can someone move those uh, consensus items be yeah. adopted? Mm -hmm. That's first. Oh, it's on page three. Oh, sorry. Yes. Backtrack. The minutes from the previous meeting for confirmation, 19th of March 2019, if you can all remember it. Oh, yeah. I can remember it well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry, uh, someone moved the minutes. Uh, Councillor Boothby and seconded Councillor Habeck. 
All those in favour? Carry. Now I'll move to the consensus agenda. No items? Someone move the consensus agenda. Councillor Boothby and seconded Councillor Johnston. All those in favour? Carried. Members will move to the debate agenda, which is 4.1, appointment of deputy presiding member. I'll call on Mr Maveron and Act to just give us a bit more information. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, just for members, uh, we when we did the report, we didn't sort of put a time frame on this appointment. Uh, obviously, in terms of the fact that this committee will probably meet, you know, about four times a year uh, during the uh, course of a calendar year. So the question is whether, in terms of your appointment of the deputy, you wish to appoint it for the remainder of this council term. And then, obviously, then maybe you wish to consider how you want to uh, go forward uh, for the new for the new council in terms of appointing this committee in terms of the deputy. So I'll leave that to you to how you want to uh, consider that. Thank you. So the items appointment of the deputy presiding member on page 51. Councillor Johnston. Moved Councillor Angus. Seconded Councillor Boothby. Councillor Johnston, you. Any further nominations? Either one wish to speak to the. Okay. And you've accepted Councillor Johnston. All those in favour of Councillor Johnston? It's carried. Thank you. Item 53 is the Calbeba West Rural Living Zone on page 53. You need 4.2. 4.2. Yep. There is a recommendation there. Any questions or further comment? So we're resolving not to proceed, or this the recommendation is, with the code amendment in light of the new policy. And we'll inform the landowners accordingly. Someone like to move? <coughs> <coughs> Councillor Angus, seconded Councillor Wee Smith. Either one wish to speak? Councillor Angus? Um, no, thank you, Mayor. No further comments? All those in favour? Carry. Members, that's our agenda for the Strategic Planning and Development Policy Committee meeting. Our next scheduled meeting is the 21st of June 2022 at 9.30. With that, I will formally close that meeting and move back into the ordinary meeting of council. And the item, <coughs> I've somehow lost a page. 69. Uh, did I, I think I've given Wendy my page. Page 69. Okay. <laughs> Page 59. 69. 69. 69. Okay, I'm a, I haven't got a page. Bear with me for a moment. Seven point two point one is the Stormwater Management Authority a presiding member, and with that, I will declare an interest. Um, and it is a material conflict, and the uh, this particular role is uh, a minister's appointment, and it has financial contributions if appointed. So, with that, I will uh, leave the meeting and hand over to the deputy mayor. Shall I do it from here? Yeah. 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 I think this is going to be quick to sit up there with yeah. the chair. Yeah. 
recommendation. <coughs> uh, we have a, a mover of the recommendation. Councillor De Vries and seconded uh, Councillor Troop. Uh, all those in favour? Carried. Sam? <coughs> you do a good job. I didn't go seeking it, I did get a phone call from the LGA asking me to put the application in, which was appreciated. Thank you. 7.2.2 is the uh, resignation of Councillor Richard Miller on page 75. Page 75. Move the recommendation, Your Worship. Move Councillor we uh, Councillor De Vries and second Councillor Wee Smith. Either one wish to speak? Um, yeah, why not? Um, I think we're all going to miss Richard. It's uh, it's a shame that he's he stepped down, and it's even greater shame the reasons why this was necessary. Um, I've been on the council a long time, and Richard's been there for a um, big part of that, and. Uh, He's been a, a very valuable um, counsellor in every sense of the word. I've found myself on many occasions seeking his advice on a lot of subjects. Um, he's uh, been a very active supporter of um, the Barossa at large uh, and also the town of Tanunda, uh, where he's been on several local committees. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think the community um, have been very well served by him and we're going to miss him des desperately. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I think we probably all said um, what we needed to say at the last meeting when Councillor Miller was here. Um, but just again to recognise his contribution to council over a very long time, nearly half my life. Um, <laughs> well. I've just re realised that one. Um, yeah, no, he has been a very valuable member of council and I've appreciated his council um, on a number of times on matters that I'm not necessarily right across, so we will all miss him. Um, and, yeah, he's left some good shoes to fill. Thank you. Yes, without doubt, I echo, echo both your comments. All those in favour? Carried. 7.2.3, which is the monthly financial report as of the 28th of February on page 78. Any questions? It's a recommendation there that Council receive and note the monthly report, and uh, including the notes on the material financial trends and transactions. I'll move that way. Move Councillor Johnston. Yeah. Second, Councillor Hearn. Either one of you wish to speak? No, just um, other than. Um Thank Mr Lark for this contribution and we see transparently what's going on with our finances and thank you very much. Thank you. Echo okay, those with comments. All those in favour? Carried. 7.2.4. This is further Oval Works request to Nunda Football Club. Move the recommendation. Page 81. Move yeah. Councillor De Vries and seconded Councillor Hearn. Wish to speak to the motion? Yes, I will. Just to put it in broad context, um, the, the report's pretty comprehensive, but um, I actually got a call from uh, Stuart Swan from the footy club, uh, sorry, from the cricket club in Tanunda and, and uh, went along. Uh, Richard was there as well, uh, Richard Miller and um, Commander Wood from the football club. And the concern was this, that... The council has ripped out a lot of trees at the Tanunda Oval and put a lot of work in to improve the site for the ability to play um, high-level football on the ground, um, you know, SA, NFL and, and um, SACO-level cricket. Um, and somewhere during this whole process, uh, when the Oval was extended to uh, add, um, to take the three-metre runoff uh, out to five metres, um, somewhere along the line, uh, we got it right in terms of the width, but the length uh, was, um, was 
shorter than should have been ideal, and I'm not going to go into how we got there. Um, but um, as a result of that, uh, we were running the risk of actually having the centre square for the football and the 50 metre arcs virtually touching, so it was reducing the oval length um, by um, a num uh, yeah, at least two metres. Uh, so all they're really trying to do by doing this is to correct that. Um, my view, this should have been picked up a lot earlier, and um, I've actually um, spoken to them about it, and I've said that, in fact, the next agenda item is about having somebody going along to that committee to be part of it, and I've said to them that I'd be very happy to be a part of that, and if the council's willing to support me on that, I'd really appreciate it, um, to sort of make sure that um, if there's any little hiccups still in the process that we can pick them up. But um, the club are very keen to get this sorted, uh, both football and cricket. Um, this council has spent so much money on this project already um, and to just not get it done properly uh, in, the, in the final uh, leg would be a real tragedy. So um, I just want to get this done and done well. We've done so much. I just want to make sure that this is um, it's done to the point where the community can be proud of it. So um, that's, the, uh, that's the overview. I'll, I'll go to Councillor Hearn, who seconded. Do you wish to speak? Yeah, no, Councillor also those remarks of Councillor... Uh, opposite? Thank you. De Vries. De Vries, yeah. Sorry, I'll move that up. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Hayden. I've got a different view. Councillor De Vries. I've gone through it two or three times. The, I think it should be called title shifting the goalpost. That's a bit of a pun. But the report says that the oval is in the condition it was set out to be and good work by Joe and the team. The widening, the extra grass has been done, the fence is up, <coughs> beautifully done the job. And uh, I think that we've met the, the conditions as we should have now. The measurements of the inside of the oval work out that, uh, to my calculations, that to increase the length of the oval by 450 millimetres, which is not even half a metre. And I gather that the southern, the northern end is correct, which if you halve that because of the distance back to the southern end, um, it means 200 mil. And I can't see why the centre of the oval, the playing area can't be configured to fit in. Now we want to rip out the fence that's just been completed. All the curbing, uh, etc. for the sum of $71,000. I don't think we should be spending money for willy-nilly. And I know we talk about the job's got to be right. Well, I think the job is right. I think that uh, the people involved need to work around it somehow. Now, going on from that, yesterday I thought I'd go for a drive and I went down there and had an inspection. And I thought the southeastern court, so um, just to put it right, the bases for the goalpost and point post are already in. They've got covers over the top with some witches hats on the top. And when I looked at the southeastern corner one, Without my tape measure, I could see that it wasn't five metres from the boundary. So I thought this morning before I come here, I'd bring my tape measure, which I did. And I measured the distance of that point post connection down to the ground to the um, boundary fence. And it's just shy of four metres. It doesn't even, to my way of thinking, it doesn't even fit the local football at this stage, uh, let alone the five metres for AFL football. I'm just wondering, probably Joe would better answer this, that uh, when did we get advised that uh, the over wasn't correct to bring up this matter now? Was it just recent or some time back? Ms Thomas, there's a question there. Through you, Mayor. So it was the footy club that was advised that they weren't compliant with the three metre line. By the that Football Association? By the local football association. That was after we'd done the master planning process, which is why the over-widening came in as a separate project. Um, 
And so what is required under the guidelines or the, the um, AFL community guidelines is for the runoff to be between three and five metres, depending on what levels that you're, you're, you're after. So, that's great. Um, yeah. So that's been done. So that's been done. Um, the, the discussion that I've, uh, I've had with um, different representatives from the club, which has been three since we started this particular project, when I've been asked the question about where the goalposts would go, is that I didn't know where the goalposts would go at that point because we hadn't done all the documentation to support it. But there was always the room for the posts to be moved as well as the boundary. And that was the basis on, on which we, we moved forward because it isn't... Um, the context of this is that the, um, the oval is only one element of this whole... Um, the whole mix of projects that we're doing there. And there's considerable tension there with both the tree removal, um, the internal roads, the proximity to the bowling club and trying to maintain their parking. Um, None of this is ideal because we got the funding for the lights before we were able to do the oval widening. So the main uh, risk or threat then was that we were going to put the lights in the wrong place. So the context of this has been trying to uh, retrofit all of those different elements into um, a final outcome. Um, and so those guide and what we wanted to do was to make sure that the three metres didn't become four metres or five metres and we found that we had put the lights in the wrong place. So that was the basis on which we we, we, we started the whole piece of work, but it was the football club that was, was notified about the fact that their current runoff didn't comply and so from an insurance point of view they were, there was a risk there for them. You realise all that and uh, you've done a, an excellent job of it. it. It's the fact that at this stage we're in a no-win situation where the oval is not even compliant for the overall local work, as far as the point base goes, let alone AFL. So someone needs to shift those goalposts and point posts around so that when they mark the boundary line in on the northeastern side, it's got to meet up with the point post, as we know. And that point post is not quite four metres in units. So someone's made a blue. I, I can explain. Well, someone needs to explain it. Because perhaps, maybe, because yeah. I don't want to close the yeah, debate, that's all. Yeah, rather than go around, yeah. <coughs> CEO. So, I could probably draw it up to make it easier. But So when when it was surveyed multiple times and we did additional survey, it can meet and it does meet the original design parameters and it does meet <coughs> the design to have the goalposts at four metres. Four metres? Yep, without a problem. The fundamental issue continues to be um, to get the AFL, it's 900 millimetres needed over the whole area to move that fence. So um, I had to make a decision about do I put them in at four metres or do I put them at five metres because the season's about to start. I said there's no AFL on the horizon, put them in at, at, at the five metre letter and get the greater length and we'll sort it out as we sort it out. But they can simply go forward. We also assessed, as part of this, um, an option, obviously, to have two sets of goalposts so they can meet both standards. But the problem with the five metres is, well, I'm not going to say it's a problem. The specification issue with the five metres is simply the gap between the 50 metre line and the 40 and the... Yeah, I know that. Right, so you're talking 450 millimetres at each end versus 900 millimetres at each end. That's what it boils down to. So the reason that they're currently in there at around four metres is that it meets the current requirement, but to get the five metres on that corner, it needs to come out 900 mil. And that's a decision I had to make at some point because it couldn't wait. So we've uh, we put them in there at that amount. They can be simply moved. That's not an issue. Um, that's why they're currently sitting there at around about four metres. But adding 450 mils to the length of the oval... Sorry, I can't quite hear you. I'm just saying adding 450 mils to the length of the oval is not going to make up the extra metre that's required at the top end. It's 900 mil. It had 900 mil in the oval. Yeah, that's the total. Yeah. And it, I mean, 
those, if they put the, if we put them in under four meters, then they put them in the wrong spot. <laughs> we can go and have a look at that. Well, there'll only be a few mills, but what I'm saying is, if we leave them where they are, when the day comes and this oval's been set up and spent mega bucks on it to bring it up to AFL standard, as is, when AFL come along, we're going to have to shift the goalpost and a sum of money. So let's, why don't we get it right to start with five metres? We can, simply by moving the goalpost, like you say. Absolutely. Well, why don't we do that? Well, we can. The, the issue that the club is bringing forward, and I've been asked to investigate by mem particular members, that then you've only got 450 metres, uh, millimetres, not metres, and they don't want to play on an oval that's only got 450 millimetres between a square and a 50 metre line. That's all it is. Look at the whole post wherever you want. So I played a lot of football, and the fact is that all ovals are different. They're different in width, they're different in length, and I don't see anything different to the oval down there being different to maybe that's another oval. And I'm not thought width. Three years ago, I'm not agreeing with, disagreeing with any of that. I got asked to bring this forward, and that's what I've done. And I just think that we we're, we're getting spun out for seventy one thousand bucks. Councillor, no, I'll just go to Miss um, Thomas first and then Councillor Wee Smith. But just through you, may just one comment on the posts for AFL. They have to be changed anyway because the current posts that will be being used won't be AFL standard. So um, we've already been through that with the club that they wouldn't spend the money on the AFL standard posts for the sake of a couple of games potentially here and there. So they will always have to be for any event for an AFL. They'll have to bring AFL quality posts in in any event. That's only the post, they bolt onto the base. So I, I understand you, you that, but, that but the goalpost can potentially be moved for those situations because mm -hmm. it's, it's just an, it's a, it's a product of putting a sleeve 